Interest rates are on the rise, so today we'll be discussing when is the earliest that you can remortgage. Hello, welcome back to our channel and podcast. My name is Gemma and here at WS we talk about all things relating to money, mortgages and positive money mindset. So if that interests you, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps with our YouTube algorithm and means that you won't miss out on any of our videos. On today's episode of Let's Talk Money and Mortgages, we have Ifti joining us once again. And for those of you who don't know Ifti, Ifti is a trained accountant and mortgage advisor who's been in the industry for over 11 years. And he is also one of the founding directors here at WYS. Welcome back, Ifti. How are you? Hi, I'm very well. Thank you. How are you doing so much? Yeah, not bad. Thank you. Today, we're talking about interest rates. It's like a hot topic at the moment, isn't it? They are on the rise. Yeah. Bank of England has made another announcement that it's going up, right? So yeah. it's funny times for sure. So what we're going to be discussing today is really just about when can you remortgage and the earliest that you can do this and some other little things that might help you out if you're kind of concerned about the rising interest rate. So for those of our viewers who don't know, what is remortgaging? Okay, so remortgage, but well, let's take an example. If somebody takes, say, a 25-year mortgage, a term, there is usually a deal period where people lock in a rate for a period of time, like say two years, three years or five years, right? In this example, let's take two years, right? So if somebody takes a two year deal, that deal finishes after two years, in which case they fall into something called a standard variable rate. If you want to avoid standard variable rate, which is generally quite high, you do something called a remortgage, right? So you get another deal, right? So you take another two years or a five year deal, and then you fall into a better rate than being on the standard variable rate, right? The standard variable rate is about two, three times more than what you normally pay. So that's generally quite high, right? So you want to avoid that at any cost. So remortgaging is basically the process of, of applying for a new mortgage once your fixed rate ends. Yeah, that's right. So it's a new deal that you're going to get for your own property so you might still stick to that 25 years but your deal you finish two years you get another deal for maybe another two years so that's kind of what it is okay cool and so now moving on to this question i know everyone's been wondering when is the earliest that you can apply for a remortgage it's a very very good question because at the moment uh, people are a little impatient right because a lot of people want to apply for their mortgage we get a lot of calls saying look my deal is finishing in eight months time can i do something now right ideally you want to apply mm -hmm. for your mortgage under normal circumstances maybe three four months in advance right because you know that gives you enough time mm -hmm. to find a good deal to do the legal work in the background and make sure that your deal goes on to the next deal on time right so that's why you normally look at it three four months in advance but given the interest rates rising in circumstances like that most people will prefer to do it slightly earlier so that's why a lot of people are concerned eight months before right but eight months is a little difficult because quite often what happens is banks give you a mortgage offer which is fully open for six months so if you apply eight months in advance your mortgage offer might not be valid when it comes to the renewal mm. date right so it might expire by then yes six months might be an option for you to look at for sure right but yeah. what i want to sort of highlight here is in some cases you may be on that eight month period but to break the deal you may have to pay a penalty but you paying a penalty may not be a bad idea if you're getting a better deal right i'll just use an example let's yeah. say somebody's on a five percent interest rate right and let's say the penalty is one percent right and the new rate that they're going to get is three percent right so if that's the case i'm just using this as a basic example right so three percent plus the penalty one percent is only four percent but you're currently paying five percent right so it may be worth looking at that as an option you know it's always worth having these reviews right i always encourage mm -hmm. our clients to come back to us after about a year's time to see where they are because there might be other deals out there which might help them right so it's always a good idea to review your mortgage every year uh, that's something i strongly suggest a lot of people do right because your circumstances change and your plans change, all these things can happen, right? In an ideal world, you want to sort of look at it, you know, three, four months in advance. But given the current circumstances, mm -hmm. you might want to review it a little early is my answer. Yeah, so I think really the earliest that you can apply for a remortgage is about six months, isn't it? That's how long the, yeah, the offer started right. for with, with most yeah, lenders. That's right. so... Yeah, with most lenders. Getting your mortgage online doesn't have to be complicated. At WIS, our website will help guide you through step by step. 
Our fully qualified advisors can help you get the most suitable mortgage for you. Then you can relax. Safe in the knowledge that WIS are working in the background to get your mortgage approved. WIS. Online mortgages made simple. There is a bit of something that I think we should mention here, though, if D, because obviously at the moment we are noticing that the offers, before they were kind of, you could renew the offer, but now we're noticing a little bit of a trend that the lenders are not renewing the offers, right? So yeah. what does that mean for people? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point, right? So we just need to make sure mm. that when you get an offer, that the offer doesn't expire before your deal expires, right? That's a horrible situation to be in, especially if the interest rates are going up. I mean, obviously, I know it's gone up the last few months, but we are not sure whether it will go up like that in future. We just don't know, right? There are indications to say that it might happen, but it's a crystal ball question. You really don't know the answer to that, right? So we have to make sure that the offers are valid, right? So it's always a good idea to talk to your advisor. I know sometimes you are in a rush to get this done, but it's no point having offer which expires before your deal ends, right? So you have to be a little careful yeah. on, on that one. You know, I can understand from the bank's point of view as well, right? Because the interest rate's gone up. Just because you mm. jump the gun doesn't necessarily mean that they are obliged to give you the old rate, right? So just be careful you don't apply too early, right? Again, advisors can guide you on that before you make that application. Yeah, and something else that we noticed was that recently some lenders weren't putting an expiry date on the offer. So that's something people should bear in mind as well, that they would have to double check with the lender, you know, to make sure that when the offer is expiring, if it's not on there. Yeah, I think some lenders don't show it on an illustration because usually they issue something called a KFI or KFAX illustration. On that, sometimes you don't see that, but generally offer should show the expiry date, right? So we see that quite often now. So we just need to make sure with the lender that, you know, the offer is actually valid, right? So that it can cause problems later. Okay. And so now we're going to talk more about the longer fixed terms. Now, with, these are kind of options for people who are going to remortgage. So obviously before there was two rates, there's five years and three years, seven years, but now we're seeing lenders offer 10, 11, you know, sometimes even longer. So I have a lot of people asking me, you know, what should I do? How, sh how long should I fix this? For how long are the interest rates going to keep rising for? So what would your advice be, Ifty, on this? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on your circumstances, right? There's no right answer to the same question for someone else, right? Because say for example, let's say I've got a kid and I think I've got to move house in two years time for school reasons, right? So for a person like that, a five year deal may not work because you know, it's no point, right? Because your mortgage will have a ERC, early repayment charge, right? So usually what happens with early repayment charges is if you have a five year deal, it keeps diminishing every year by 1%, right? With most lenders. So you might still end up paying 3% penalty to get out of that mortgage, right? So you sometimes do have that porting option, but that has its own restrictions, right? So you may end up paying this early repayment charge. So for that kind of person, it won't work, but if somebody is quite sort of stable, let's say in their late 50s, and they think, okay, I'm not going to move house anymore, and I only have a small mortgage, for a person like that, maybe a five-year deal might be okay. So it really depends on the circumstances. Usually, the shorter the deal, the more flexible it is. The longer the deal, the less flexible it is, right? So if your lifestyle is, there's quite a lot of changes happening in your life, longer term deals may not work very well for you. Usually long term deals, the interest rate is high as well, right? So that really costs you more as yeah. well. So you really want to make sure that you're yeah. doing the right thing when you come to that, right? There's no one fit all mm. kind of answer for this one. But again, if you are worried about these kind of things, it's always good to speak to some advisor who can guide you on this right yeah definitely and the last point that we wanted to say is that you know with interest rates currently on the rise is there anything customer can do differently to sort of help them out in this scenario yeah with the interest rates rising right i'd say best is when you know you need to do a mortgage or when you know you want to do a remortgage do it as soon as you can when the window opens right I've had situations where I've told clients, look, the rate the bank is offering you is, say, 2%, for example. And guess what? An hour later, bank sends an email saying, sorry, the rate is going up tomorrow, right? And sometimes the bank don't even give notice, right? It just changes overnight. You come in the morning and you don't have the deal, right? So as soon as you know you're going to buy a house, just make the application, right? It helps in conditions where interest rates are rising, right? The good thing is if you apply early, you find a better deal, right? If the rate, interest rates go down, you can always go and change it, right? But if you miss the boat and the interest rate goes up, 
you got no choice right you have to go with it right so try and plan this mm-hmm. early especially with remortgages you can do this better because you know when your deals finish right so when you know when your yes. deals finish you know you can always plan this right so try to get in touch with an advisor maybe 6 7 months in advance right so that you can start applying 6 months yeah. before yeah. you know i always encourage people to speak to brokers maybe a year before right so because even the brokers can help you right because sometimes they say look you're heading towards a 75% ltv mortgage or 25% deposit in other words right so maybe you can yeah. say 5000 and we'll get you there right so those kind of guidance the advisors can give you if you talk to them in advance right but if you leave it to the last minute you might not be able to get mm-hmm. those deals right so yeah and i would definitely say another thing that can really help you out is there are a lot of documents to prepare so i would definitely say in this kind of climate it really is in your best interest to try and get those documents prepared as soon as possible to understand like what documents you'll need check your credit score make sure nothing's changed there's no surprises there you know and then we're not scrambling sort of last minute because we're literally getting emails aren't we from lenders the day before saying tomorrow the rate is changing and it gives us a very short time frame and so if we contact you saying this rate's going to change you know it really helps if you've got all your documents ready to go so that's definitely something i think that can help yeah, definitely that will always help be helpful right yeah contact your broker and find out what documents you'll need if anything's changed you know sometimes different lenders have different requirements so it's worth kind of knowing in advance maybe what they might be yeah any any other tips ifty that you've got that you can think of yeah i mean again it's uh, very funny times at the moment yeah, unfortunately from a humanitarian point of view there's the war going on which is not great but it is also having impact on things like the interest rates right mm. you know we are hoping that there is something positive from that side but in these kind of circumstances it is not unusual for interest rates to go up right because we see that you know worldwide it's not just a uk based issue right so get on it fast yeah. right that's all i can tell you all and obviously the inflation's been high in uk as well that's not really helped the interest rates either right so if you are thinking of mortgages remortgages get on it as soon as possible so that's the main advice i can give you all right and plan in advance that's very very important yeah. right because you know usually when you have a good plan you know your direction much earlier and if you can plan certain things you might end up having better rates anyway right so it's always a good thing to do that yeah and just be mindful when you guys are looking at the online calculators for rates that sometimes those rates are not always applicable to your situation it's i know it's confusing but sometimes it's very specific these rates so um it's definitely worth contacting somebody and there's plenty of free bro- brokers out there ourselves included that don't charge a fee that get their fee from the lender so it's definitely worth reaching out just to make sure that what you're seeing on the online calculator is is a true representation of what you'd actually be able to apply for all right well thanks again for joining us today thanks ifty for some more great advice as always i just want to put a reminder out that these points may or may not be applicable to everybody so please do talk to a broker if you're unsure if they're suitable for you and if you don't have a broker i will leave our ws contact details below as we're always more than happy to help a little reminder that as a mortgage is secured against your home or property it might be repossessed if you don't keep up with the mortgage repayments thank you again for joining us for today we'll be back next week with another episode of let's talk money and mortgages have a great day stay safe and see you again soon bye